Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm Joe. I'm... <laughs> Guys, it's just not a good start to be... Hi folks, welcome to the Restoration Couple. We are going to be getting cracking on some beams. Finally going to finish and tick off all those bits in the cabin. Because it's cold outside. Snag annuary. So no one wants to be outside. <laughs> it's freezing out there. Snag So uh, yeah, a little bit of woodwork today. So the plan is to install some timber beams or kind of feature uh, sections in between each of the areas of this open plan area. And for that reason, we've got joins and stuff in our ceiling paneling that we know we're gonna end up covering and that's why we put the joins in particular places. Uh, we've decided on this, which is just plain square edge uh, redwood and we're gonna be doing a little bit of work to it before it goes up. First thing we need to do is work out which is the side which is going to be facing down, the visible side, and which is going to be up. And there's a couple of things I need to look at. I picked through to get these ones because some of them have uh, kind of either big knots or holes all the way through. So the most important thing to start with is working out which side is going to face up and which side is going to be visible downwards. And the most, uh, the biggest factor in that for me at least is this uh, shape here, which is the rings, the growth rings on the grain. At the moment, they're like this. And as timber ages and dries and moves at all, the rule in general is that all of those lines want to flatten down. So this side will end up going down, this side will go down and very, very slightly. But if we installed this up onto the ceiling as it is now, and the ceiling is nice and flat above, as this might dry and pull down, we'll end up with a gap here and a gap here. So instead, I'm flipping all of them the other way so then if if there is any movement and it decides to cup a little bit then this side will only be pushed up further into the ceiling and so will this side the only slight negative is you may end up with a tiny uh, bit of cracking on the middle of the underside that shouldn't happen because these are really stable they've acclimatized and they've been kiln dried and um, so that's the way we're going to do it and hopefully any defects and anything I would have spotted when I picked them off the shelf anyway. So this is the B for back. And I've done that on all of them. So Joe and I have done a little bit of test fitting. This one is now the perfect length and it fits everywhere we need one. So we're going to use this as a template. We kind of crept up on our measurement. Uh, so I'll transfer this measurement to those and then Joe can drill everything and then hopefully we'll get it all up before the school run. Right, the dressing gown DIY crew is here. Uh, we're going to get these cut outside because it's just easy and uh, less messy. It's the good side facing up on all of those. And this is our template. Cut all these first and then we'll flip. All right, back in the warm. The rest of it we can do in here on the dining table and make a mess. Turns out we've already made a bit of an error because I flipped the board and then didn't flip the other ones. Anyway, uh, we've got tolerance, it's okay. Next stage, going back to our template, is to mark out our holes. Now up on the ceiling, we've got buttons, 50 mil buttons running down the whole ceiling and where every pendant is, there's intentionally a double batten. A double batten equals 100 millimetres, so we've got to make sure that our fixings are less than 100 mil apart. So what I've done here is come in 30 mil from each side, uh, and first of all, mark the line. So we'll do that on all of these, and we'll translate it across, and then we'll get these holes drilled. Which is there. Try and do everything at once. So we'll square across, matching up with the one below, and then we'll do a tick at three. These are exactly exactly 12 centimeters wide, so a tick at nine. 
Then there are two holes. But now the way we're going to do this is instead of using filler or having visible screws, we're going to try and plug them. And in order to do that, I'll just show the camera. This is a corresponding bit that you'd get with a plug cutter and we'll cut the plugs in a minute. But first up, we're going to use this. So we've got a four mil, uh, sorry, a three mil pilot in there. That'll go all the way through the board. And then we want to bore out probably two or three mil of square walled hole for the plug to sit in. So the next bit of dining room carpentry is to plane off the edges, just to give it a bit of a chamfer like we've got on this big glue lamb beam up here. I'm not going to bother with a router, I'm just going to do three, I think it took four passes with a block plane and uh, or bench plane and it just kind of gave a nice angle. To Right, I was all set to start installing them, turn the power off, but as light as it looks on the camera, it's getting pretty dull. The kids are just about to come back and, uh, and I haven't brought any work lights up. So we're gonna do this first thing in the morning. Everything's prepped up. What I'm gonna do now is just do a little bit of sanding to them and get a load of uh, finish on them. Behind me on that end wall, that's cedar. It's just planed and been left. And it's gone from being kind of quite a pinky golden hue to slightly paler. Then we've got the glue lamb beam running across the top. Now that started uh, as white wood, you know, as pine, and it has gone slightly darker. And therefore, although it's probably the same species, it's going to look a fair bit lighter. I do need to do a little bit of cleaning and sanding on that glue lamb beam. Um, but I think we'll just be patient, get these up, and we'll just let them age a little bit. But to make sure that they stay a little bit more stable, I'm just going to put one little rub over of beeswax. But apart from that, they're all prepped, they're all ready. It's just the electrics I need to get sorted. Now one of the reasons for getting some finish on before they go up is because I don't really want to have to mask the ceiling. And although it's a clear finish, if we've got it anywhere near that blue paint, uh, it would go shiny and show up. So I'm going to make sure that the sides are finished and I'll put a coat on the middle anyway. Um, it would be easy enough to just put an extra bit because of course when we plug these holes we're going to have to sand them and then we'll put a bit more we'll finish over those areas and I don't want to get this anywhere where I need to do wood glue. If we've hit a cable, I want to know which beam it's on, so we're going to check each one after each install rather than wait until the end. Yeah. yeah, it might not be turned on on the switch. I hope. Turn up. Okay, so you turn them all off again. And I'll work out. Wait for pencil.
167. Right, that is the third one up. Uh, we didn't get, what well, I didn't get my measurements quite right. We should have got it really, really snug and crept up on it. Uh, we obviously cut them as a batch, and I think they were all pretty close, but we made the stupid mistake of not flipping them uh, at the end. So all the angles were 12 degrees the wrong way. Corrected that now, but that's opened a bit of a gap at the top, but we can sort that out. Now we're gonna get this fitting, uh, light fitting back on loads of play and I can tell that we haven't caught the cable which is good. I was able to look at the photos to see so it should be alright. This was the challenge. Get, the, get this beam more. up and fit We've and back on. More. No, but I said, let, I reckon we can get this one done before our meeting. Oh, I thought you said we could get them both done. All right, well, pretend I didn't say that. That'd be a success. Right, with all those timbers now fixed nice and neatly to the ceiling, the lighting all wired back up again, now we've got to go and do the important bit, which is making all these plugs. So stick around, let's head down to the workshop and see if we can find the tools that we need. Sorry, as per usual, a bit of an interlude there. Bizarrely, the piglets seem to have uh, become very affectionate to the ram, as, they, as you do. Now some of you sometimes ask, why do I whisper in my videos or talk quietly when I'm outside? It's because of the goats at the moment, the goats are next door. They've heard us. So excuse that, I'll try and uh, talk in between their noise. Now because we use redwood, this joinery grade softwood, for the main beams, we're gonna be using exactly the same. We're gonna use the offcuts for the plugs. And then hopefully we'll be able to line up the grain to a certain degree. So we'll get the plug cutter set up. Now the plug cutters, um, I should have really used a small one, but I couldn't find the corresponding um, countersink bit. So that's why we went up with that. I think it's probably 10 mils, so it's a bit bigger. So this is the one we wanna use, and this is gonna cut a plug which should fit the, uh, the same size bit that we've already drilled for those screws. Now this is a, a fair bit more work than just slapping a bit of filler on there. Of course, if you're painting, that's that's a obvious thing to do, but if you're trying to just leave it waxed like work we are, you just wouldn't get away with it, this size hole at least. Maybe a little pin hole from a brad nailer you would. But... All right, I don't have a depth soft all snapped off, but what I've set it to, set the table to, mean that we're drilling almost all the way through but importantly not all the way through. Okay, probably uh rush through that a little bit so a bit more tear out than we need but the actual plugs will be fine so one option you've got now if you're doing this is you get a little chisel or a little screwdriver and you just put it in there and click it to the side he says let me get in there so you can see it's there we need them a little bit longer not the full depth because we didn't drill them that deep but we'll now take this to the bandsaw and see if we can cut this Excuse the neglect, the rust, the general state of things. We want to move our fence across. As you can imagine, that's a very neglected saw blade as well. There we go, we'll pop these back in. So now we've got all of our little plugs, all pine grain, exactly how we need. A chisel that's not too battered, so normally one that is not used much. Half inch chisel looks pretty good. I'll give it a quick touch up on another rusty, neglected tool.
There's a little nick in it, but it's sharp enough for what we need. Now, the other thing we can do with plugs is instead of just chiseling and sanding them flat, you can uh, use a little pull saw. So I've got a little trim, Japanese trim saw somewhere, and that works quite well. You can masking tape around the hole and cut it off, almost flush, and then sand it. Problem with that is if there's a lot of them, it's a slower way to do it, but and also you can risk catching the blade on the wood. If we do it with the chisel, we can be fairly controlled and then we can just rub it, sand it, and get some wax on it. If, you, if you're too greedy and you try and chisel it off too much in one, you can end up chipping out beyond the level of the, the wood. So we want to just be really gradual. We should be able to pair it quite flush. Take any bits off or we'll squeeze out the glue. Right, then the very last thing. There's a rabbit on the sofa. Come on, get off the sofa. But she's so cute. Right, there we go. Everything is nearly prepped, ready to put a bit of the beeswax on. The one coat that I put on here looks fine and I'm happy with that. And what I'll be doing in the next week or so is just going over and sanding that whole glue lamb beam because that's just weathered from when it was sat in the elements. It went up and it never changed. That's why it's got some watermarks and bits and bobs on it. So if we can give that a bit of a rub back, it should all end up and get everything at the same stage. And then it will naturally age together because it's a sim similar sort of colour to what that was before it went up. So there we go, all of the trim is now up, plugged, neat and tidy. Um, I'm just going to work on this central beam to make sure that's sanded and waxed and it all should tie in then. Now we've got all of these boards up, it means that all of those nail holes, the joins, anything like that in the cladding on the ceiling is now completely covered. So getting them painted first, then installing them, then putting this trim on was the best way to go. Also, if you've used the plug cutter, I found that you, you really need to kind of make a note of the grain on it. I probably used a bit too much of a simple board when I cut those plugs. I had all those off cuts. I sh should have picked one with a little bit more figure in it because some of these boards are more grainy than the plugs. So the plugs show out as being a bit plain, but that's r me being fussy and it's well above our heads. We're not really gonna see it. Anyway, I think we're done. Are we done? Yeah, we're done. Joe had, to, slow. <laughs> Joe had to uh, take a, a step out of this one because there were ladders involved. I don't know, I was up on those works, sir. Cause... True, you were. A vintage ladder as well. Some of you will comment on that, I'm no doubt, but you know, use what we had to hand. We'll leave it there. If you've got any questions on it, let me know. I think I'll try and dig out the oak plug video from a few years back when we did the sliding door. Do you remember that pocket hidden door? in the oak porch uh, because that showed things a little bit closer up. It was a lot easier to film because it was at waist height. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.